Hi and welcome back to this lecture, which is number five in this lecture series on Windows Server 2016 with me, Joachim Chevrestad from the University of Kvoda. Uh, in this lecture series, we'll look at how we can share files within our domain that we created in the previous lecture. So now we have a domain with a bunch of users in it that is separated into groups. I added a few more uh, since the last video. So if I'm just going to show you real quick, I'll go to tools in the far right corner. I'll click Active Directory Users and Computers. And then you can see that I have a bunch of groups here, executives, finance, HR, IT, so on and so forth. And I have about 20, 20 or so users that are separated in between those groups. So what we want now is to have some place where those users can share file, uh, files between each other. So we will make some, we'll make two shared folders where some of the user groups will have different kinds of access and we will do the appropriate role groups so we work with the nested groups as we've been planning this whole time uh, and we'll also make home folders for all the users so that they can access their files for, or have a personal file storage area of their own and the idea here is that any user will be able to get hold of the files that is stored either in the common storage areas or in their home folder no matter which client computer they use to log in. Uh, another nice thing that you may want to do is create a canonical name in your DNS server to make the files or the file server accessible through a nice host name like files. Uh, remember um, that in a normal domain you wouldn't have everything on one single server. You would have one Active Directory server or maybe even more. You would have one file server standing somewhere else and it can be nice if it's accessible through some nice host name. So that's what we're going to do first. So what we do is that we get into our server manager, we go to the tools in the upper right corner and we click DNS and uh, so we'll just expand that for you uh, and if we go down in the forward look up zone we go to do9joaka.local this is where we created a canonical name for our server because remember I misspe misspelled the name to be sewer and I wanted it to be accessible using server as well now we'll make yet another C name uh, for that we will call files so the way we do that is just right click in here take new alias and then we type in the alias name which is going to be files and then the fully qualified domain name of the host which is sewer.do9joaka.local. So we go OK and now we're just going to see that it worked so we just real quickly head over to one of our clients and we can log into one of our new users like Kema. And I already did this, so we would, sh shouldn't have to wait for the entire login process. The prompt looks quite, the mouse pointer looks quite funny when I'm in there. Okay, it still does take a while for some reason. Uh, okay, there it is. So yes, to make sure that everything works, I'll go to the magnifying glass, hit CMD to get a command prompt, and then I go ms lookup, and I should just be able to type files. And you'll see here that when I type files, it points to the sewer or the server that we're using in this domain. So all nice and well. Uh, what we're gonna do now is head back to our Active Directory and plan for the folders that we're going to create. So I'm going to make one shared folder that should be read, write, execute for all users in the domain. And I will make one shared folder that is going to be read, write, execute for the finance group because it holds some important financial information, but also the sales users should be able to read that folder. So the way that I achieve this is that I begin with creating those rule groups. So I go to the rule groups organizational unit and I hit uh, add new groups. Another way is to click the icon with two dudes or one dude and one dude maybe up in the uh, toolbar up here. And I will just name it whatever I want. So I'm going to name it share because it has to do with shared folders. And I will call the shared folder all. So I'm going to take the name that I plan for the shared folder as the second part of this name. And then I'm going to end with the permission that should apply. So this is a rule group that will house all groups that should have read, write, execute permissions to the shared folder all. So next thing I need to do is take all of my role groups and add to this group. So the easiest way is to go to the role groups organizational unit, mark them all, take add to groups, and then I can just type in share here to have a search. And okay, that didn't turn out quite as well as I planned, but it worked. So if I go back to role groups, I can just double click my new role group here and I will have members and you'll see that all the role groups are in this 
are members of this group. So now we can head over to our file structure and make this shared folder. So we'll just open a file browser and browse to the location where we would want it uh, in a real world environment. It would per perhaps be on a file server or at least on its own partition, but th that's not the case here. So we'll just go new folder and I can name it shares just to keep track of what I'm having in here. So I'll open that and then I'll make yet a new folder that I will call all because that is the name that I decided. Quite a bad name when I think about it, but that's what we have to go with. So now I have to do two things. First, I have to share this folder so that it's shared on the network, and then I will have to set the MTFS permissions that should apply for it. So to begin, we just right click the folder and hit properties. And then I'll begin with going to the sharing, uh, to the sharing option, and I'll just head right down to advanced sharing and select share. And you will see that I have a share name that will be the same as the folder itself. Uh, before I do anything else, I'll just hit permissions here and you see that everyone is pre-selected and I will just hit full control. Because we'll, as we'll see in a minute, we'll have two sets of permission. Those are the sharing permissions and we will then start working with the MTFS permission. And you can with good confidence just set full control here because the rule is that when you have sharing permissions and NTFS permission, permissions at once, the most restrictive sets of permission is going to win. So there is no real issue in setting full control here. So I'll just select that and hit apply and then OK. Uh, and then apply again and then OK. So now this folder is shared, but we still have to make some nice permissions to it. So then I'll hit over to the security tab and again, I'll just click advanced so that there is a nice way to do anything. And this is where you set the actual NTFS permissions. And there is two things that I want to uh, highlight for you. So first off, you see that there is already a bunch of permissions uh, applied to this folder. So for instance, there is full control for system, there is read and execute for users, and so on and so forth. And those permissions are inherited. So if you look at the inherited tab, you can see that this folder inherited this set of permissions from uh, the C colon partition. Uh, and that creates some issues for us because, well, we could be fine with the system and admin permission, but we definitely want, don't want permissions for users because we want to control the permissions ourselves. So what we will do first is click disable inheritance. And uh, now we will get to questions here, or one question, and that is what should happen to the inherited permissions. And we can either choose to convert them to be explicit permissions for this folder, or we can remove them altogether. I will actually choose to convert them because it can be quite neat to keep the permissions for system and admin so that we don't mess up something. So for instance, it is common practice that admins have access to everything because they need to do stuff. Uh, however, we don't want the permissions for users and creator owner, so we'll just remove, remove those. And now that we've done that, what we can go and do is to add the permissions that we want. So we'll just hit the add button and then we come to the uh, dialog for adding a new permission entry. So the first thing that we have to do is select a principal and principal in this case is either a group or a user and we decided to use this share user that we created. So we can just input the name here and hit OK. If there is only one possible uh, group with that name, uh, share, then we'll get that. If, as we will see in a little while, we have more groups named share, they will all come up here so we can pick and choose what we want. Uh, so we have the share and we should uh, have the type here, which is either allow or deny. So should we give them the permissions that we're setting here or should we take them away? And we want to give them permissions. So we go with allow. You should always try to be very restrictive with the deny permissions because allow permissions, those are inherited throughout the structure. Deny permissions are as well. But when there is a deny permission, it will always take precedence. So deny permissions are explicit. In, if you just want to make sure the user cannot add access a folder, instead of using deny permissions, just don't give him or her allow permissions. That's a much better way. Uh, so next thing we can do is configure the inheritance so we can select how it will apply. In this case, I'm going to go with this folder, subfolder and files, meaning that the permissions that I set here will apply for this folder and everything that is created beneath it. But we can also select to have this permissions for this folder only, only for this folder and subfolders, only for files, 
and a bunch of different options. Uh, next, we're going to select the permissions that we want, and I'm just going to go with full control because this was a read write execute. Uh, this is actually the grouped way of showing permissions. We can make it even more granular if we want. If we click show advanced permission up here to the right, and then you'll see that we have some more th things to choose from. I personally don't like using this way because when you have a large setup if you're using too much different too much granularity in how you set permissions it's going to be hard to keep track of what permissions you actually have so try to keep it simple that is my tip and of course if you are faced with a situation where you have to make something that is very special well then you would have to go and work with those but not for now so we're switching back to show advanced permissions and we're going with full control quite easy quite simple and we just click ok and now we see that we have permissions for system, admin, and this share all group. If we want to see how this will work in effect, we can go to the effective access pane here, and we can actually see how what permissions that will be applied to a certain user. So if we do select user here, and we, for instance, type in uh, Kama as username, which was our test user, and hit OK, we can see what uh, hit effective access down here and we can see what permissions that user is getting to this folder. Uh, so it's one of our users, so it should have full control and it has. Nice and good. So we'll just hit click and close and now this shared folder is done. <clears throat> what we could do is quickly head over to our uh, to our client to see that it actually has access. So what we would do then is to open a file browser and we can just go up to the uh, address field and hit backslash backslash files and it should browse the up to the shares that are shared on by the by the server and you can see that all is here so we should be able to click in there and we should be able to create something if we want so let's do a text document hi from comma and that's all nice and done so next thing we will do is to do a shared folder that is just a little bit more complicated. So this is going to be a shared folder that we call finance. And for finance, the finance group should be able to read, write, execute, and the sales should only be able to read. So let's go into the rule groups organizational unit again, and we create two new rule groups. Because now we need now we have two different rules, so we need two different rule groups for this. So the first one we should call again share because it's again a shared and it's for for the folder that we will name finance and it's going to be read write, read write execute so hit ok and then for we need to add some rules to this so we double click it we take members and then we can add and we want the finance group to have read write execute and maybe we want the executives as well because they are a little bit of control freaks executives and hit apply and okay and next we want a rule for those that should only be able to read what's in this folder so we'll go again and we take a new group and we call that share finance and just an r for read and hit okay so that's the rule group okay we have to add the users as well of course so members and for this one we should have sales so now it's done uh, with that in mind we'll go back to the folder structure and we're back in shares and this time we'll right click and we'll again create a new folder we will call it finance and then i'm trying to speed it up a little bit so we go properties we have to share it first so we go sharing advanced sharing share this folder permissions and full control for everyone as shared permissions because we will set more per, uh, granular permissions on the NTFS level and most restrictive set of permissions will win. So next thing we go to security. Again, we go to advanced. Again, we see that the permission there is a permission set inherited. We want to disable inheritance so that we can set our own permissions. We will convert inherited permissions and we will remove users and create our owner. So now that it is done, we can add the permissions that we want to have. So let's start with the RVX permissions. So again, we select the principal, and this time when I hit share, you can see that I will get a result of the different groups that I have that begins with share. So this are, these are the rule groups that I have so far, and we should do the RVX, share finance RVX, and again, full control, and we keep the, and we keep the, 
the inheritance as it was, and we just hit OK and, and apply. And next we uh, should input the read permissions as well. So we go add, we go select principal, again we type share, and this time we take the one that is called share finance R, OK, leave this. And in this case, we, we just keep the read permissions. So you need to have read and execute, list folder contents and read so that you can read and execute uh, any programs or files that are in here. We should not have write, modify or full control because we don't want them to be able to modify data, create new data or remove existing data. So that's it. We can go to OK, we go to apply and we'll just have a quick look on effective access. So I know from before that comma is a user in the sales group. So if I select user here and I go comma, I should see that the user comma has read access to this folder. And as you see in the effective access pane down here, I obviously did something wrong. Let's go troubleshoot that. So we'll go back to the Active Directory. To that group and into sales members call malm okay that's weird so what did i do wrong here always funky okay let's check for one of the finance users instead so i'll go check for tooly check names and OK and view effective access. So he has full control as we would expect. And then again, I go comma, call malm, view effective access, no read. That is indeed, indeed weird because he should have read according to the permissions that I set. Okay, let's see if, let's just see if it works. So we'll go back to the workstation and now you can see that when we go to files, we're still on Carl. We still have, we have the finance folder and he's not able to get in. So I guess that I have to troubleshoot this on the fly. So I'll go to my users. I go to Carl Malm and uh, let's check his memberships. He's a member of sales. Okay. Let's follow the track and we go into sales, member of, share finance R, then I am a little bit at a blank. So let's go back to the properties. We go to finance, security, advanced. We have the shared finance R, read and execute, allow. Let's see what happens if we do uh, an explicit permission for that user. So I'm just typing in call mom, okay. Apply, and then we go effective access. Now he has the read permissions that he should be able to have. So I am going back to permissions. We're removing Carl Malm because she, he shouldn't be there. And instead we're adding the group again. Share finance R. The read permissions, okay, apply. Okay, we'll go back to the client, go into all where we can be, go into finance, where we cannot be for some uh, interesting reason. Let's check with another user that is in that group. So sales, let's instead check um, Lars, Lali. So we'll go back to finance, we'll go back to properties, Security, advanced, effective access, lolly, view effective access. He has the permissions that he should have. Call mom doesn't, okay. Let's just work with Lars instead so I can troubleshoot this at a later time. So I guess that now we created all the permissions that we wanted to have. So what we're going to do is that we will uh, we will be happy with that and we'll head right over to checking the uh, the permissions where, while I log in with Lars. 
So I'm going back to the client, I'm logging out, and I'm going to log in with Lars just to see how things are going with the file ser with, with the finance share. And that's going to take a while, so we'll go do some home folders for the users while we do that. So doing home folders can be easily done through Active Directory. So if I'll just show you right here, if I right uh, double click a user, I can go to the profiles tab and you will see that I have the home folder selection here. And what that basically do is points out a home folder that is for a user. And if I have it on the file server, I can go connect and I can connect a drive letter making the home folder appear under this PC right here for the user. And that is what we want to achieve. So what we need to type in here is basically a file path to each and every user's home folder. So what we need to do first is create a shared folder that will house the home folders. So we go back to our shared folder or shares and we create an yet another share that we call homes. Uh, so in that course, uh, or in that uh, in that folder, we have to share it again. So we share it just as we did before. Advanced sharing, share this folder, homes, and permissions, allow for everyone, and OK. So now what's going to happen when we input the users, uh, uh, what we can do now is that we don't need to create individual home folders. Instead, we can just input the path that we want the home folders to have, and they will be automatically created. But to do that, we need to create some permissions because we want the users to be able to create their home folder in here. Because what happens when we input the path is that the user itself is actually creating the folder. And we want that to be allowed. But on the same time, we want it to happen in a manner that ensures that the users are not getting access to each other's folders. So we have to tweak that a little bit. So we'll go into the NTFS permissions again by hitting advanced here. And again, we will disable the inheritance so with that, that we can remove everything uh, except the system and admin. So we'll remove the users and creator owner for now. Uh, and then we will re-add and we will re-add re all the users because we want the users to be able to create their own, own home folder. But in the applies to section, we will set this folder only. Because what we want to do is to give the users right permissions to this folder only so that they can create their folder, but we don't want this permission to be inherited down to the actual home folders. So we'll do that. And then there is a placeholder that you can use. So we're selecting a and creating a new permission. And as principle, we are taking creator owner. Okay, I mistyped that. Creator owner. So what creator owner is, is a placeholder. So when you set permission for creator owner, you set permissions that will be applied to whoever is creating something. So if I set full control here, what's going to happen is that if I, the user test, go into this folder and create something, the permissions that are here will apply to me for my created object. Likewise, if Kama comes in here and creates his home folder, he will get this permission to that folder. So let's just hit OK and apply and OK. And I'm going to show you how we do this. So what we want to do here is to go into the sharing and we'll see the path that we have. So this is the path that will be to the home, the network path that will be to the home folders map. So we'll keep that and backslash backslash sewer backslash homes. And now we can go into Active Directory and as I said, we can go to profile and we can connect and we can take down the path that we want to have. But there is even a way that we can do them all at once. So instead of just instead of having to do each and every one like this, we can do them all at once. So we'll take this one away and we will mark all the users in here. Right click them, take properties. And now you see that we have a much more limited uh, amount of selections, but we'll just go to proof profile, we'll check home folder, connect, choose a letter, and then we type in the path and we end with a variable that is percent username percent. And what will happen now is that there will be one home folder created for each and every username and the name of that folder will be the username. So we'll go apply and we'll have to wait for a while and we can click OK. And then if we just do a test, we can go to one of the users and hit profile and you will see that there is a 
a path inserted here that has the username at the end instead of this percent username percent thing. We can also validate that it worked by going to the uh, to the actual folder. We go into homes and you can see that there are a lot of home folders created here and we'll just take one of them at random again and go to properties and security to see that the permissions got correct. So we'll go advanced and I misclicked. So I didn't, I clicked the, uh, if you click out in the white, you'll get to the permissions for homes, but I want to look at the permissions for Rojo. So I'll try it again, properties, security, advanced. And now you can see here that we have permissions for creator owner, but we have permissions for Rojo, which is full control. And this is because we set permissions for creator owner at the homes folder. Uh, so now we're just going to see that that worked. So we'll go back to the client again, and there are two things, or uh, there are two things that we want to check. Now we're logged in with Leela, so we're going to see that he has access to uh, to the finance folder. So we'll just again go up and type files in the toolbar, and you can see here that we have the finance folder. He should be able to enter. He is. He should not be able to create something because, uh, if I remember correctly, he's a sales user and you see access is denied and now we'll finally lo log in with one of the finance users so we'll just log out here and then we will log in with another user that is called Thule and now we will check that he has his home folder and since he's a member of finance I know that since before we'll also make sure that he can create stuff in the finance folder so it shouldn't take that long because I logged in with this user also previ previously to speed things up. So we will start by going in to the file browser and hitting this PC. And you will see here that he has his home folder mapped up. And we should also be able to go up into the address bar and type files. And he should be able to go into finance and he should be able to create stuff here. always using contact which takes a while to create because you have to input in all of those fields hi from Thule and that is basically it so that's it for files and folders uh, of course there are a lot of different things you can do with permissions I showed you some of the basics here uh, but I really urge you to get down and dirty and read up on the internet on the different NTFS permissions that you can have. But this is in essence how you create shared folder on shared folders and home folders on a network. And I will I really urge you to work with those nested groups and rule groups to make things work really smoothly. Because now if we want to change permissions, for instance, maybe we want to give some more group access to uh, finance as read, we can just go members, we can just go add, and maybe we want to add uh, HR, so we just hit HR and then that's done. We don't have to do anything on user level, we're dividing our users into those different rules, rules or rules, uh, and then we create rule groups for the different rules that we want to apply. If a user is changing rule, we just go into here and maybe add some member to a new rule, and so on and so forth. Uh, well, now that's it for this lesson. When we get back, we're going to get a little bit. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more into different settings that we can do with group policy objects. Uh, this is all for now, and see you next time. Bye.